Hello there and welcome to another edition of Budget in Focus, a special program where we'll take a look at the work programs and plans contained in the National 2021 Budget. With us today, we have the Honorable Bishop Juan Edgel, the Minister of Public Works. Bishop, thank you so much for joining us. Good afternoon and greetings to all your viewers and listeners. Thank you. All right, so this afternoon we want to put a special emphasis on sea defenses and the allocations that were made in the National 2021 budget. But before we touch on the allo allocations, can we talk a little um, about August 2020, when your government first assumed office? One of the situations you were confronted with um, is flooding and um, uh, uh, sea defense uh, breaches at Danzig, Maikoni, um, and other surrounding communities. Can you tell us what confronted you when you entered office and how the government was able to deal with and manage that situation? Well, it is very interesting that my orientation into the Ministry of Public Works, sea and river defense, and having to deal with a breach the day after assuming office was something that I would say I, I consider it to be an eye-opener and realized how deficient the previous administration was, how incapable they were in handling serious issues of life and livelihood. The extensiveness of Guyana's low-lying region, where most of our people live, the low coastal plain, where we have our agricultural lands, whether it's rice, sugar, other crops. Our sea defenses, and for the purpose of this conversation, Gomati, we need to also say sea and river defenses because some areas along our coastline is not just protection from the sea. And a good look would be along the East Bank Corridor. That's the Demerara River, or in the West Bank Corridor, that's the Demerara River, but we also have to ensure that the river uh, does not overtake the land. What we found was that there was a five-kilometer stretch along the Danzig content area in the Maikoni Region 5 that had posed some problems before. The thing about sea defenses, if you have a breach that is 50 meters wide, every day that you don't attend to it and the tide changes, 50 meters becomes 150 meters. 150 meters in a few days become 500 meters. In a few weeks, it becomes a kilometer. In a couple of months, it becomes several kilometers. Because the longer you take to act, the worse it gets. The worse it gets. One of the things that the Grange administration was known for and they specialized in was not acting. Indecision. So when I got up to Region 5, everyone was flooded, lands covered with water. Poultry farmers were affected, cattle farmers were affected. And we had to mobilize immediately. We were able to get a contractor, get the necessary approvals from the National Procurement Board through a no objection from cabinet, engage that contractor, and in a matter of weeks, resolve that issue in an emergency manner. Since then, what we have done is we have moved from 
emergency works and we have awarded contracts in excess of a billion dollars to ensure that we protect that entire stretch. And over the last six months, you know the story. Works are ongoing there. We have been on site to ensure that the vulnerability as a result of what was taking place there is practically addressed. So you would find both earthworks as well as hard boulders being fixed in an engineering design pattern to protect those areas. Now, with that understanding of what took place, one of the first decisions that I made was that we have to get back to the rangers. You cannot wait until the seawall breaks away or the river dam breaks away to act. The rangers must be able to get out there on a daily basis because it is so susceptible that you could pass today and everything is fine. And but tomorrow you, there is but, but, but there's a tide that does some damage. So the eyes and the people from the villages with the experience who know and will be able to tell you about the shift and the changes in patterns and what is happening will be able to patrol these river and sea defenses and give early warning so that interventions don't come after the fact that we practice preventative maintenance as against just responding to emergencies. We have been able to successfully do that. And hence, in the 2020 emergency budget, monies were allocated. And now in the 2021 budget, we have significant sums again allocated to ensure that we continue to protect Guyana's vast shoreline, whether it's the Pomeroon, whether it's the Quarantine, Region 5, whether it's Region 10, down the Demerara River, because they've had floodings in uh, places like Comaca and Three Friends and Northern Hampshire, or along the traditional sea walls and the other issue that must be put on the table and I think it's a burning one because it is as a result of the patrolling of these sea and river defenses that we are now aware and actually have the head count of what is taking place along the Grove Horstelling River Defense. That phenomena of squatting, not on land, but squatting on the riverside, beyond the seawall, into the river, putting their own lives at risk, and of course, creating an almost dangerous position for the Sea and River Defense Department, should we have to execute emergency works, there's practically no space. And not just that, but you're putting everybody else in that uh, community or area um, at risk. Definitely, definitely. And it is something that we have to address. And the Sea and River Defense Board, because uh, we, our law require that there be a sea and river, river defense board, we have been able to reconstitute that board. It is now headed by Brigadier Gary Beaton, um, an engineer himself. And just a few days ago, I stopped at uh, Les Beholden, Blackbush Polder, where under his command, his men were building a 90 feet bridge across a canal there and they're doing lots of other good work of quite a capable and knowledgeable engineer he's heading that board 
and we have been able to make several visits and interventions in a proactive manner, where it was charity on the Essequibo Coast, Supernam, the Georgetown Seawall, and now we have to look at what is taking place at Grove, Horstelling. We have made interventions at Spikeland in Region 10. As a matter of fact, there is a contractor that has been engaged on that project since 2019 under the leadership of then Minister of Public Infrastructure David Patterson. And the work is not complete. It is ripe for termination because the people of Spikeland in Region 10 are being flooded as a result of neglect. And, and that is what I'm saying. When we got into government, just the sheer neglect. You don't wait for a crisis to act. And then after the crisis, you take forever to act while people are suffering. Make no bones about it. Our river and our sea defenses affects everyone, not just farmers. If Georgetown is inundated, all of us are in trouble. If the East Coast, there is a breach, all of us are in trouble. Not just the rice lands of Region 3 or 5 or the farmers of the Pomeroon, but every resident. So we have been able to get an aggressive, well-constituted, Sea and River Defense Board, the Sea and River Defense Department of the Ministry of Public Works. They are very active in 2020 under my leadership. They have achieved almost 100% of their implementation of their budget. They're highly motivated. We've been able to get the people uh, in the various regions because whether it's Leguan or Wakenham or the Essequibo Coast, wherever, whether it's west, uh, the, the, the east bank of the Burbis River, heading out there, Lighttown, Shieldstown, Mara, all of those areas, we have to be able to deal with this phenomena. And it is something that is being addressed. So if there is anything that I can do on your program this afternoon, Gomati, is to say that the PPPC's administration, both in its 2020 emergency budget and its 2021 budget, recognizes the need for us to continue to make the necessary interventions as it relates to our sea and river defenses. We have, of course, we got programs that are foreign funded on going through the CDB, and those are being executed in various parts we got to continue to build capacity in-house. We have to be able to ensure we strengthen monitoring. The guys have been able to bring modern technology, drone technology, to be able to do surveillance across uh, the shorelines. But, you know, even with the best of imagery, you still need boots on the ground to be able to examine. So there is significant work that is being done. I know the viewers might be wondering, why did I ask that question to begin with? But I asked that question to lead into my next question. These are challenges you encountered when you assumed office. And we're seeing, I think it's $5.1 billion allocated in the 2021 budget to cater to sea and river defenses. Can you tell us how those, taking into consideration the challenges you just outlined and all that has to be done, how is this $5.1 billion going to be spent this year to ensure that we overcome some of those challenges you outlined? Well, the $5.1 billion are going to be divided into three categories. Number one, we have projects that commenced late 2020 as a result of the emergency budget that is what you call rollover projects. They are on, ongoing and they continue into 2021. So monies in that 5.1 billion will go to rollover projects. I think there are about 10 such projects being undertaken across the country. So continuing works. Then secondly, we have what is called our new capital works from 
our own observation and our research. And let me just say, I have seen letters in the newspapers and opinions being expressed, and I deeply appreciate people who take the time to comment on such serious matters, some of them engineers, some of them specialists in the field, and they have indicated that 5.1 billion is certainly inadequate. But I would just retort and respond by saying, it's not how much money you get. It's what you do with it's it. It's what you do with what you get. Because 2015, 2019, if the operatives of the APNU AFC could really show the people of Guyana what they did with the money, it will make a big difference. You know, they spent $1.1 trillion and there is not one significant program that you could show to the people. If you spend $1.1 trillion, a trillion dollars is a thousand billion. That's a whole lot of money. But here it is, we have what some people say is not sufficient, but we are addressing interventions in Pomeroon. Yes, the Pomeroon. We are addressing interventions at Region 2, various places in Region 2. We are addressing interventions. There's major sea defense works that are being undertaken right now at IFLA, and I think it's Cornelia Ida. We are undertaking major infrastructural work on the East Bank corridor. You're passing, you're seeing that it's funded through the CDB, a loan from the CDB. We got works that are being undertaken along Region 5, which was what confronted us when we got into government. Works being undertaken in Region 6, both on the East Bank and on, on the Quarantine Coast. We got works that are being undertaken in region number 10 in terms of sea and river defenses. And these monies, while we would have loved to have more, but budgeting is not just giving people money. It is about prioritizing. And while we would like to have all the money in the world to be able to do all the dream things that we have in ID, uh, we have in our heads and the ideas we have, we are satisfied that at this stage we can have 5.1 billion dollars to continue what was started in 2020 and to begin and finance new initiatives to protect our sea and our river defenses in 2021 and i'm sure should the economy perform beyond expectation and I'm hoping that it does with the kind of interventions and, and motivation that is uh, presently present in our country. I think every day people meet me and they congratulate the PPPC for the work they're doing. They say, you guys are doing real good work. It's, there's a lot of energy. Things are happening. People are excited about what is happening in Guyana. Well, once we perform well, we have to pay attention maybe to do more. It's not that we would not do more, but we have to do them in a phased manner. And the second thing, we did not want to have a situation where you have a big chunk of money, but then you don't have the capacity, the contractors with the skill set to be able to implement the engineering capacity to manage and to monitor. So yes, we are making very important interventions. And I think I made the point the last time that I was here that the way we do development is across the board. We've had to make some interventions on the Georgetown Seawall because a phenomenon was really developing there that is becoming dangerous. That's part of the beauty of Guyana. Yes. First Lady, Her Excellency Arya Ali has been paying some attention to the beautification of our country. And I believe every Guyanese should come on board and support that because it might be a soft side of development, but happiness and well-being and a clean environment and beauty are things that make 
people comfortable and it encourages productivity and excellence becomes a standard around us. So I would ask all Guyanese to come on board and join uh, Her Excellency um, Aria Ali in her beautification uh, project that she's undertaking. And we have to create a new culture that you don't dump garbage in the mangroves. Uh, you don't just litter the sea walls. You don't throw the plastic overboard. You don't leave the place in disarray. You don't create unnecessary confusion and congestion. You know, the sea walls and our river dams, we need them and we got to take care of them. And one of the ways in which you take care of them is not just building new ones, but is maintaining by properly using the ones that are there. Bishop, on that note, I just want to ask quickly. Earlier, you mentioned squatting. You found squatting to be an issue along the sea defenses. Uh, you are you talking about taking care of the sea defenses and all of this. Has the ministry taken any approach or any measure so far to address this issue of squatting along those areas? Are you in talks with the Ministry of Housing or any other agency to ensure that that matter is addressed? Yes. The answer to that is a simple yes. And it's not only the Ministry of Housing. We've had to engage the Ministry of Local Government and Regional Development because the case, a charity, is something that has to be addressed by the Neighborhood Democratic Council. You know, the issue at Grove or Diamond, coming back to Horst Stellin, where the NDC office is, they could observe and see every day the squatting that is taking place out there. But they do nothing about but, it. It is not just a job for the Ministry of Public Works, Sea Defense Department, or the Sea Defense Board. It's a job for all of us because if they interfere with the ability for us to maintain proper sea and river defenses and something happens, everyone suffer and while we understand and we see that there are a lot of uh, Venezuelan migrants who are out there yes we have been talking to the Ministry of Housing about possibilities but then we're also learning that there are people who are actually building and renting mm. so they have populated the eastern side of the sea defense, which is the land side of the seawall, and now they're populating the water side of the, uh, or the western side of the seawall. And that's something that we have to address. A charity, because of the developments that are taking place in the Pomeroon, and I congratulate all the people in the Pomeroon for the great work they're doing some of them are doing excellent work, starting to manufacture. Coconut is becoming a big issue in the Pomeroon, and that's good for agriculture. We've had to do a number of inter interventions to ensure we mitigate flooding and so on in the Pomeroon River. But right there at the Charity Wharf, when we did an inspection, people are building buildings and seemingly want to claim ownership of the river dam. And then we observe that because of the magnitude of what is taking place in the Pomeroon, the supply of gasoline and other fuel into the Pomeroon is now big business. And I was there with Brigadier Gary Beaton and the chief engineer for my CN River Defense Board and the secretary of the board. And the gas tankers are reversing in to discharge fuel. And people are se selling right here, right there, as if it's no big deal. We just had a situation out in Region 3 where a tanker blew up and did cause harm. We have to be able to get things organized. 
So the charity waterfront development must be completed. The Sea and River Defense Board, they are actively engaging SuperNAM, um, the waterfront development there to ensure that the cubicles are properly populated with businesses, the parking of the cars, the mooring of the boats, and keeping those waterways in such a manner that is attractive for use, tourism, and the development of where our country is going. Of course, we still have issues to deal with as it relates to the Georgetown and the Vreden Hoop uh, ferry um, stellings and the terminal buildings there, they're in a, in a, in a, in a state of disrepair. Uh, but through Marad, we've been able to put in some interventions to allow for safer uses of the speedboats, both to get in and to get out. And we got great work to do. So yes, we will need more money, but do not ever despise the days of small beginnings because it's the small things, when you add them up, create that mountain that of, of progress and that mountain of development that we want to talk about. Uh, Bishop, unfortunately, we're running out of time. But before we go, I want to ask you quickly. Uh, you mentioned that since 2019, some works were uh, going on under the former administration, and they're yet to be completed. We're in 2021. We're having a new budget. Works are going to start again. Uh, what systems are in place by your ministry to ensure that contractors adhere to the guidelines and deadlines that are given on these contracts and ensure that they deliver on what is given to them? Well... And this is not just in terms of sea defense, it's across the board. Yes. Any contract or contractor that is not performing, we're going to terminate the contract. This afternoon, just before I came to this program, I gave the instructions for the termination of the contract at the Leg One Ferry Stelling. It is one of the contracts that we inherited from the AP and UAFC. And I have also released a copy of the Auditor General's special report on that project. And you will see what we've been talking about, but maladministration, corruption, mismanagement. You will see the details. We have released that report this afternoon. We have to terminate the contract at Spikeland where the people are suffering. We have tried over the last six months. Okay, it's already bad. I have gone to Leg One four times. I've gone to Spikeland at least three times. Get on with the work. I have another contract for the St. Cuthbert, Cuthbert's uh, Mission Road, which is right for termination. These are contracts that were signed on the 31st of December 2018, after the passage of the no confidence vote. Some of these contractors have no capacity. So, what will I do? Number one, I will terminate contracts. Number two, I am notifying the National Procurement and Tender Administration Board of the poor performance or non-performance of contractors so that they must have notice that when these contractors bid through other ministries, they must not be allowed to get work because the board that, that makes the recommendations must know that these people come in with a nice fluff and fancy write-up for contracts, but they can't deliver. deliver. Number three, I've put all of my engineers at the Ministry of Public Works on notice. You sign off for payments for works that are not done, are not satisfactorily done, you're gone. You are put there to protect the public purse, not to facilitate mischief and to allow contractors to rape the country. Number four, from the level of minister, permanent secretary, who administers the financial aspects, my permanent secretary, he has already been alerted. I need greater financial accountability in the management of finances in these contracts. And of course, you can see both myself and my minister within the ministry out there ensuring that we are not receiving bluff and fluff in papers and remote, uh, reports and emails and WhatsApp messages 
but we are seeing for ourselves what is and underground. what is on the ground. So it's, it's, we're taking a boots on the ground approach. approach. And that is what we are doing, uh, whether it's roads, whether it's city fences, whether it's uh, supply contracts, whatever it is. Monitoring and evaluation is an important tool. Tracking, ensuring accountability. And of course, wherever we have doubts, like you would have seen, I would have done. I have asked the specialists to advise me, which is the auditors, including the Auditor General of Guyana, tell me what is really going on. I might have my own understanding, but I will act. Because when the Auditor General gives a special report and says, this is what is wrong, these are the breaches, I might know the breaches, but I want to ensure that the skills and the competence is, is there in terms of the advice, and every appropriate action will be taken. But we want contractors to be developmental partners. We don't want to be terminating. We want to be building and giving people value for money. Minister, it's always such a great pleasure talking to you. Unfortunately, we're always running out of time whenever you're with us. Uh, but thank you for being here today and thank you for talking um, on the National 2021 budget and what we can look forward to, especially in the area of sea defenses. Viewers, that is all we have for you this afternoon. Thank you for joining us. I have been your host, Gomiti Gangadin. Goodbye.